to the fort. We are continuing our reading of Dragon Master's Roar of the Thunder Dragon, and we are picking up in Chapter 3, A Little Help from Magic. We can't plan a silly parade, Rory said. We have to keep looking for Lalo. Carlos and Diego are looking for Lalo, Griffith said. We must obey our king. Rory frowned, but didn't argue. There's so much to do, Petra said. This is so exciting, Anna exclaimed. She ran into the classroom and everyone else followed her in. She began to draw. King Roland and Queen Rose need to make a grand entrance, she said. They should ride through the village in a fancy carriage pulled by dragons. Shu would be honored to pull the carriage, Bo said. Anna nodded. Capri, too. They both can pull the carriage. And she started drawing again. Our dragons should do tricks to show off their powers, Rory said. Vulcan could shoot fireballs. Uh, fireballs are dangerous, said Griffith. Let's try to think of safe things your dragons can do. Rory frowned and folded her arms. Zara could sing, Petra said. She has a beautiful voice. Hmm, I'm not sure what worms should do, Drake said. You'll think of something, Drake, Anna promised. She held up a drawing of a fancy carriage. How's this? It's perfect, Bo said. But where will we get a carriage like that by tomorrow? Anna looked at Griffith. Could you use magic? Griffith stroked his beard. I could do a transformation spell, he said. But I need something to transform. Something round and white. An onion, Drake cried. I'll get one. Drake ran off and soon returned with a big white onion from the kitchens. I bet my family grew this one, he said. We're the best onion growers in the kingdom. They all returned to the training room, and Griffith placed the onion and the drawing on the floor. Stand back, he said. Griffith pointed at the onion. Sparks flew from his finger, and they hit the onion. A simple onion is what we see. But a kingly carriage you shall be, he rhymed. The onion began to grow and grow. A big white carriage sat where the onion had been. The carriage was made of wood carved with flowers. It looked just like Anna's drawing. It's perfect, Anna cried. This is a wonderful start, Griffith said. Come, we have more work to do before the wedding. Chapter 4 a parade of dragons. Today's a beautiful day for a wedding, Anna cheered the next morning. There isn't a cloud in the sky, agreed Bo. The dragon masters were outside the castle doors, ready for the wedding parade to begin. Each dragon master was wearing a new clothes made by the king's tailor. Anna wore a yellow dress that shone like the sun. Bo wore a silky blue tunic with a wave stitched into it. Rory's dress was as red as fire with a high ruffled collar. Petra's green dress had long sleeves and a short train behind it. Drake looked down at his yellow shirt and brown pants. His new outfit was a lot like his old one, only neater and cleaner. I love how we match our dragons, Petra remarked. You look like a fire dragon, Princess Rory. Rory smiled. Thanks, she said, but can I be a fire dragon warrior instead? Of course you can, Petra replied. Griffith appeared. Places, everyone. The king and queen are coming. Rory ran to Vulcan, who was leading the parade. She climbed up and sat in a saddle. Puffs of gray smoke streamed from her fire dragon's nostrils. Drake picked up two buckets filled with flowers and ran to Worm's side. Worm stood next to Petra and her poison dragon, Zera. Each of the Hydra's heads was smiling. Behind them, straps connected Kepri and Shu to the magical white carriage. Anna and Bo rode on their dragons. Just then, King Roland and Queen Rose stepped onto the balcony. The king wore his royal garments. 
King Rose, Queen Rose wore a long white gown with red roses stitched all over it. Her eyes got wide when she saw the parade. Roland, what a wonderful surprise! You know how much I adore your dragons. The king and queen came out of the castle, and King Roland opened the door of the carriage. After you, my dear, he said. Then they both climbed inside. Let the wedding parade begin, King Roland announced. The castle gates opened, and the dragon stepped forward, led by Griffith. Villagers from Bracken and Arkwood clapped as the parade made its way to the wedding grounds. Vulcan flew into the air. Orange and red sparks flew from his nose, and the crowd cheered. On the ground, Zira began to sing. Sweet tones drifted over the crowd. Now, Worm, Drake said, and his dragon's eyes began to glow green. Flowers floated out of Drake's buckets. They bounced and danced in the air like butterflies. Kids jumped up to catch them, giggling. The loudest cheer went up as Kepri and Shu pulled the white carriage through the crowd. King Roland and Queen Rose waved to the villagers. Huzzah! Huzzah! Hooray! Hooray! For King Roland, everyone cheered. Suddenly, without warning, the sky grew dark. A wind whipped up and lightning flashed. Take cover, Griffith replied. The villagers rushed to stand under one of the wedding tents. King Roland pulled Queen Rose away from the carriage window. A loud roar filled the air, a roar like thunder. Boom! Drake looked up. A hull made of purple, swirling energy appeared in the sky. Eco and her dragon swooped down from the hole. A baby lightning dragon flew behind them. Lalo, Drake yelled. Oh, wow, I can't imagine what's going to happen next. But join me tomorrow and we'll find out in Chapter 5.